A few years ago, protest signs like this were all over the area. Now we see far fewer of them. Is this because people in the area have come round to the idea of the HS2? We're going to ask people how their views on the high-speed rail link have changed over time. Let's see what they have to say. I'm Hayley Farrelly. Uh, this shop is a group of local artists um, and we all live within about 10 miles of each other. Um, I'm the potter um, in here so, and I live in Ballinger which is about two miles away. So. Right, excellent. Uh, what are your general feelings on the HS2 project? Um, my general feelings are that uh, and it's an extremely large waste of money. It started off at a certain amount of money and it's just growing out of all proportion in terms of expenditure. It's not going to meet the aims that it originally was going to start with and uh, I'm not convinced that it's ever going to achieve what it was meant to achieve from the outset. So. Mm. So some argue that the, uh, the long-term economic um, benefits will outweigh the short-term economic losses. Mm. Do you think there's an argument for this? Uh, I think that there is an argument to invest in the railways, but I don't think that making a high-speed rail link from London to Birmingham is the way to spend the money. I think actually had they put that money and invested it more into connecting up the northern cities and towns uh, would have been much better spent and also down to the West Country as well. So I don't think that having a high-speed rail link coming out of London just to Birmingham is a good spend of all those millions of money. What's the general sentiment amongst your friends, other people in the community? Um, so I live in Ballinger um, and I'm also uh, right next to the Lee and the Lee's very, the Lee Parish Council is very much involved in um, communications with HS2 and all of their partners. Locals are, are cross, they're very cross about what HS2 has done to the local communities. We've got farmers that haven't been paid for land that HS2 have, um, have used and generally they just, you know, we're, we're having a lot of disruption in our area. Uh, a lot of damage done to our communities and our land and it's not actually going to benefit us in any way, shape or form. How has your view on the HS2 changed over time? <clears throat> um, well, I wasn't a fan of it to start with. I'm even less of a fan of it now. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> um, looking forward 10, 15, 20 even years, yeah. um, once it's finished, how do you think people will look back on the project? Well, I think with the passage of time, people forget. They forget the um, the impacts it has on local areas and they forget about the money that has been spent. So sadly, I think that all of the negatives will probably, you know, sort of largely be forgotten. Um, yes, parts of the, the area will recover in terms of land and woodland but and, and you know, maybe the wildlife, but... You know, it still won't get away from that. It's an enormous amount of money that could have been spent. You know, if you're going to spend it with railways, spend it somewhere else in the country that could actually really benefit, or take that money and spend it somewhere like, you know, to the NHS, which, you know, is sort of falling over at the moment. So, yeah, it's just, you know, my view, it's just not great. <laughs> no, no, no. That's really helpful. Thank you so much. Could you start by telling us your name? Yeah. So what are your general opinions on the HS2 project? Well, I mean, I don't think I've ever been a huge fan, but what we've learned in the last few years has just been devastating about costs. You know, I'm from the north originally, and I know that people in the northwest, for instance, have extremely strong views about that. Um, but, I mean, like other people around here, you know, I've hated to see the great <clears throat> service roads being built and you know, the devastation around Wendover, you know, I do a lot of walking in the woods and some of the paths I used to love are now impassable because of um, they're either li turned to liquid clay or they're just not nice to look at anymore. And that sounds trivial, I know, but, um, you know, what we know now is, you know, no one could persuade me that it isn't the biggest white elephant mm. um, in my lifetime, probably, you know. Um, do you, do you think any of the long-term environmental gains will outweigh any of the environmental losses that we've had in the short term? Well, again, because of the time delays and, and you know, the limited scope that, that it now has, I mean, I don't see how there are going to be any advantages. You know, By the time it's finished, we're, you know, we'll all be getting to work on jetpacks, you know, probably. You know, why didn't they spend this on 
high-speed broadband, you know. Yeah. We're a small country, we're not France, we're not Germany, you know. Um, it's just not feasible. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to work that one out. You just have to look at the map, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. What about the overall community sentiment? So I know a lot of people in Missenden are against it. Um, have there been protests about it? Have there been people trying to stop it in the area? Yeah, I think that there was uh, some time ago, again around Wet the Wendover area primarily, I think. Um, yeah, there were people uh, along that stretch of the A413 um, almost on a permanent basis for a while. Um, and there was the famous tree, I'm not entirely sure where it was, but it featured in the Roald Dahl books, um, somewhere in that direction that did generate quite a strong protest, I think. So looking 10 to 15 years down the line, how do you think the HS2 will be viewed in hindsight? Well, a museum piece, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't see how you claw back any goodwill towards it. <clears throat> from the general public. I mean, who is, who is going to benefit? Um, you know, I, it, it's all right. So, you know, they always say when something like this happens, you know, oh, we, we've learned the lessons. Well, it, this, it doesn't count in this case because, you know, there probably won't be another infrastructure project like this in my lifetime. And so <clears throat> even the lessons aren't valuable. Yeah. It's just, you know, public money wasted writ large, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting angry now. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's really helpful. Thank you so much. Okay. That'll make some great clips. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, what are your general feelings about the HS2 project? Do you think it will be beneficial? I'm not aware of the project. Then. It's, it's a new train line that will go from London to Birmingham, but it essentially runs through the, the, the Chiltern. Do you think, in general, uh, more train lines in this country would be a beneficial thing? Yeah, maybe, because uh, if I need to go to Birmingham, I'll first go to from here to Houston and then catch a train from there. But if, if it goes from here directly, then... Yeah, it would be beneficial from here. So what if I told you that this train doesn't actually benefit us at all because we'd still have to go to London to get to Birmingham? Yeah, then it's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you. Could you start with telling us who you are, please? Yes, my name is John, and I don't live here, but I live in the southwest of France, by Biarritz. But my family uh, lives very locally um, in the southeast. And I have some views on the HS project. Uh, and I can speak as uh, a foreigner um, rather than as a local. And I'm very happy to do that. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, could you start by telling us just your general thoughts about the, the overall project? Well, if I remember correctly, the project's been running for a long time. And the, at the outset, it was to bring together the north of the country and the south of the country to make travel between the two regions better, simpler and economically to help the north match the uh, progress of the south. Uh, but it's done that at a, or is going to do that, possibly, as part of it's already been cancelled, um, but it's going to do it at a huge cost. And that cost, uh, I'm not quite sure what the current estimate is now, but the last time I was reading about it, it was about 200 uh, million, or billion, 200 million. Um, and that is an awful lot of money to spend on a project which may or may not work and I suppose the overriding question is whether that money could have been better spent to improve the quality of people's lives in the north and in the south and whether in fact this is going to be a white elephant and indications are that it is going to be a white elephant and with that comes a cost and the cost is effects on the local economy, effects on the local ecology, uh, effects on farmers, um, all sorts of effects which are adverse to the aims of the project. And the question mark is, was it worth it? In my view, it wasn't and won't be, even if it's completed. Do you think the long-term economic gains will outweigh any of the short-term economic losses? I don't think so. Um, there's been quite a lot of research done on this. I haven't, again, I'm not up to date. I think it was always very dubious whether it would actually do that, or whether it was more like a flagship uh, to say, yes, we are making the effort. And if you look at similar projects in Europe and in France, rarely do they meet in either the short term or the medium term, 
um, their projected financial returns in terms of the economy and the bettering of the economy. On the other hand, the infrastructure in France in terms of rail is far more advanced than it is in the UK, similarly in Spain and similarly in Germany. And when you have an infrastructure like that, how it's been achieved, uh, it does actually overall, not just one project, but the infrastructure overall, um, allows people and goods uh, and services to move around very, very easily. And in a way that is good for the climate, uh, much less polluting now, all the electric. And maybe HS2, if one is being entirely positive, might spur other infrastructure projects, which taken in the long, long term, would bring the UK up to the level that you see in France and other countries in Europe. But I think there's a big question mark about whether, in terms of overall planning for the UK, um, that is likely to happen. You, you mentioned um, sort of your thoughts on how it should have been done from the start. Considering where we are at the moment with the HS2, do you think there's any way of salvaging what we've got to make it something that's slightly more worthwhile than what they're currently planning? No, I don't think so, because uh, the plans have gone too far down the line. I mean, the country has always lacked, or has lacked in my lifetime, and I'm nearly 70, uh, a strategy for infrastructure development in general, um, rail being one of the main uh, factors uh, in infrastructure. Um, and with HS2, uh, then we are too far down the line of what has been planned to make significant differences. So the best that can happen is although the project has overspent, although the money could have been better spent on other things, although it will probably fail in its objectives of bringing the south and the north of the country together, is that it will act as a bit of a flagship for the future, for future governments to think more carefully about what they want to do mm. to make things like that uh, work, but in terms of an integrated transport plan for the country. Sure. Okay. Um, if we think forward now, so imagine uh, 10, 20 years after the HS2 has been completed, how do you think the legacy of it will last? How do you think people will look back on it generally across the country? I don't know. I mean, if we look at other major projects like the nuclear pro power projects in the UK, uh, now people look back and they look back on them not in the same hostile way or the same despairing way that they did at the time when they were being built and in the short term future after they have been built um, because they become familiar with them and because they understand that actually nuclear power can be green and can be uh, a means of a country having its own um, independent energy source um, without relying on other countries to provide energy, be it electricity or oil or any other means of producing energy. And I would imagine with HS2 in 20 years' time, assuming it's been finished in 20 years' time and it has become old news, uh, then it'll be viewed in much the same light. So, and with, as generations come, new generations come, um, the hostility, the feelings water down. Mm. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much okay. for that. Thank you. Excellent. Can you my beer now, can I? Yeah, yeah, no, please. <laughs> I, I don't know, sorry, I think I said 200 million. I think it's 200 billion, isn't it? Uh, yes, 200 billion, I think, was what the sign said out there. So what are your general thoughts on the HST? General thoughts, I guess, I feel, obviously, the country needs infrastructure. It needs yeah. infrastructure improvement. I think it's probably more east to west is more important than north to south. I think uh, the result of going north to south these days, post-pandemic, will probably be that more people will are likely to travel to London as opposed to away from London. The, the ease of working in London will be there, i.e. the uh, infrastructure will be in place. So, yeah, so I think it will go the opposite way in which they intended. Right. Aye, they, they did improve the uh, situation up in the north. It's more sure. likely to be in the south. What benefits or downsides do you see for the community here in Missenden? Uh, Chilterns? No benefits. Uh, obviously the environmental impact. Um, um, negative impact, obviously the environment, uh, the impacts on infrastructure. I believe there are some additional projects that may happen. I think the only one I'm aware of is maybe the uh, maybe the cycle path between here and Wendover that's being built, which would be interesting. I think they're trying to use some of the infrastructure to okay. support that. Uh, other than that, all negative impacts. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about the, the long-term benefits? Do you think some of those will outweigh any of the short-term losses, uh, both environmentally and economically? Um, I think obviously the, both the environmental impact and the financial impact are massive. There will be, of course, you know, improved infrastructure is important and, and needs to be done. So I think there is a long term benefit that will come, but it will have to go a long way to, uh, to offset 
the, the greater impacts both financially and environmentally, I think. So if you could influence the future development of the HS2 project, what would you change? What would you improve? I think if they're going for it, I think they do need to extend it further north. Is it stopping Birmingham now, mm. not going any further? I think they, if they're going for it, they should just go for it. Yeah. Uh, they've, they've made the, uh, you know, the commitments and investments and most of the damage is already done. Um, I think there could be more investment in local schemes. I've noticed, for example, the, there's an old pub when you head over here towards Chesham. They've built all the infrastructure around HS2 there, but the old pub's still there. Surely they can just use all of the, uh, you know, the, the equipment they have there to tidy up the environment around them would be useful. More growing of trees and everything else would be a yeah. huge, uh, huge benefit. So yeah. I think, yeah, they need to plough back into the communities that they've uh, ravaged to a degree. Um, how has your view of the HS2 changed over time? Um, I think I'm, I, I wasn't a supporter of stopping it. I think now that you've started and you've done most of the damage, you have to continue. Otherwise, what's the point of it to begin with? Um, so I think that's perhaps a change. Well, I've been supported. I, I, I agree with the need for developments and renewed infrastructure, but I think it has to be done in an environmentally sensitive way and not just a... Um, I don't know, the cynical part of me says there's probably a lot of job for boys within government and a lot of uh, contracts that are handed out to people that uh, don't necessarily deserve it. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm more of the sort of uh, ethical development. And yes, development is needed, but in an ethical way. Sure. Yeah. Um, 10, 15, maybe even 20 years in the yeah. future, yeah. Um, how do you think people will look back on the HS2 project? I think it'll be seen to be as a, a massive expense that maybe didn't deliver the benefits of, which it intended. Yeah. 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 It needs to be finished. But yes, I don't think it will uh, deliver quite what was what it was meant to do or that we were sold to begin with. Sure. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. Thank you so right. much. Pleasure. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see nice you. Day. Nice yeah, you too. <laughs> as we conclude today's report, it's clear that the sentiment here in Great Missenden and the Lee is overwhelmingly against the HS2 developments. Residents voiced strong concerns over the environmental destruction, the escalating costs and the minimal benefits to the transport network that many feel won't justify the long-term damage. From the loss of cherished landscapes to the impact on local wildlife, the people here believe the price for progress is too high and with spending continuing to spiral, it's hard for them to see the value in this project. Thank you for joining me on this journey to explore the local perspectives if you found this video insightful, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more updates as we continue to track the developments around HS2. Until next time, this is James McLaren reporting from the heart of the Chilterns. <laughs> <laughs>